Welcome to the Craft to Career Podcast with Elizabeth Chapel, where every week we dive into how you can turn your craft into a successful career. Get ready to have the career you've always dreamed of. Hello, and welcome to episode 80 of the Craft to Career Podcast. I'm Elizabeth Chapel of Quilters Candy, the host of the show. This week, I'm excited to share with you a little interview that we had with Pat and Walter Bravo of Art Gallery Fabrics. Just recently, if you follow me on social media or if you follow Art Gallery Fabrics or if you follow a couple of my alumni, you would have seen that we visited Art Gallery Fabrics. So it's a brand new thing that's never been done before. And some people were like, hold on, what is this that's happening at Art Gallery Fabrics? So first of all, before we dive into the episode, I'll just kind of explain what we were doing there. So, well, some history. A couple of years ago, I was a brand ambassador for Art Gallery Fabrics, or they call it a socialite, S-E-W. What that entailed, and that was actually me reaching out to Art Gallery asking, could I please be a brand ambassador? I, In fact, I talked about this a little bit on a past episode my journey to becoming a fabric designer and kind of my thinking behind why I reached out to them. But I love their fabrics and both the quality and the designers and their designs. So I really wanted to team up with them and it was a one year contract and I just got all this fabric for free, which was amazing. And there wasn't any sort of like, you have to make this many projects a month or anything like that. It's just there actually was no, like I had nothing that I had to do except just use their fabrics and share about their fabrics. And so I would do giveaways for the fabric that I got. Anything I made, I would use their fabric. Um, It was just up to me how I wanted to promote the fabric. So it was a really awesome situation. I also got to take over their Instagram account. They shared things that I made. Uh, It was a win-win for both of us. And so now I'm a fabric designer for Art Gallery Fabrics. My very first line just came out. And, you know, also I teach these courses on quilterpreneurs, which um, I wish I could trademark that term, but it's, it's just too general. But quilterpreneur, just a quilter that's an entrepreneur. And so I teach people how to start and grow a business as, you know, in the quilt industry, whether it's quilt pattern design. Obviously, I teach a course on how to write and sell your own quilt patterns. But I also have a craft to career course where I talk about how to turn your craft into a career. And I really love to find opportunities for my alumni to to further their education to gather, to grow their skills. In fact, next year in 2023, I'm gonna have a brand new uh, club, if you will, the Craft to Career Club, that will be for alumni only to really further your business. I'm really excited to bring that. But I just, I'm looking for ways to help my alumni to further their opportunities and, and all of the things. And so I wanted to put together a business retreat. I had kind of a soft launch of sorts earlier this year we went to Utah there was a group of us that went to Utah and we had a podcast where we talked together and we visited a few businesses like mixers and I loved it and it was so much fun and so I opened up an application for alumni to visit art gallery fabrics so this was you know I I pulled my alumni asked them what would you find beneficial in a business retreat because I had sort of thought of like going to a really beautiful location and, I don't know, just beautiful, relaxing, and just having visitors come and talk about business topics that could help grow the business. But it turned out the majority of my alumni really valued more than that meeting people in the industry and making connections. And so I thought, what cooler thing to do and place to go than Art Gallery Fabrics? They are my preferred fabric manufacturer, and they, I love their family feel. Plus, I think it'd be really cool for alumni to go and ask their questions about how, you know, anything, all the questions, like how do you pick new pure solids? What's the design process like for your art gallery fabrics? Who designs those? And get to see behind the scenes and ask all their questions, just you know, as a quilterpreneur 
just to, to see behind the scenes and ask their questions. And so the, my only sadness with this is that there was limited space. You know, we can't bring everyone. Art gallery is only so big. So I do have a goal of having a business retreat in the future that is not closed. That like, if you want to come, you can come. There's room for you. So don't worry if you're an alumni, that is in the works, which in fact, I do have, uh, I think it's next week, and I look at the calendar for sure, any alumni who can make it is invited to come to my house for dinner. So it happens to be during Quilt Market, Saturday night. If you're an alumni and you haven't seen the email or the invite, just reach out to me. I would love to have you come. So these are the kinds of things that I love to offer and do for our alumni of my courses, just to further that relationship and connections with other people, other quiltopreneurs and people in the industry. So with that in mind, that's what we did. That's why we went to Florida and there were a handful of alumni, you know, like I said, they applied. And for this specific trip, I looked for people who, you know, I, in the survey, I said, what have you done to grow your business? And so I looked for people who had really put forth an effort to, you know, whether it's being in a magazine, teaching at guilds, opening a membership, that kind of a thing, um, to reward their effort and their growth. So it was really fun to have such a talented, diverse group of makers visit Art Gallery together. And with that, let's jump in and you can join us in our little conversation with Pat and Walter Bravo of Art Gallery Fabrics. Welcome, Pat and Walter. We are so excited to have you here on the podcast today. A special episode from Art Gallery Fabrics. Can you two introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about who you are? Well, thank you so much, Elizabeth, for having us. My name is uh, Pat Bravo, and I am the co-owner of uh, Art Gallery Fabrics. My name is Walter Bravo. I'm, I'm the co-owner of Art Gallery Fabric too. <laughs> <laughs> love it. I love it. And we are also here with Quilterpreneurs for a very first Quilterpreneur at AGF Experience. And so we just were kind of putting Pat and Walter on the spot here. We're asking them <laughs> all the questions. So yeah, we're just going to go around and those who have questions are going to ask Pat and Walter. So um, Belle, do you want to go first? Sure. Well, I'm Belle from Seam So Me. And one of the things that I felt and experienced, and I think all of us did here, was your culture, the wonderful culture that you have. Would you share a little bit about your organizational and your business values and what those are and why they're so important? Well, as a family, we have very strong values and we believe in people and with honesty and, you know, the basic value that everybody should have. But we, we transfer this to the company and to all the employees and this, what we do, what we believe and we follow. Um, we don't. We want to make money, but we don't look that much into the money. We like more like a, care about people and consumers and products and quality and all of that stuff. So that's what we care more of, most of uh, AGF. If I may add, um, everything that Walter said, uh, completely agree. As we behave in the in our real life, in our private life, is how we behave, and this is what we try to instill in um, all the organization, our employees as well. But one very important thing for me um, is is important as well is reputation, A reputation, um, not only decency and honesty, but reputation. A reputation for the people that start a business is the most. Um, afterthought uh, value that you have to go for. Reputation is something that you take years to build. It can it, it can be destroyed in a couple of seconds. So always have to remind yourself of how important the reputation and the name of your company is. And this is what we always, every single day, um, uh, for, fight for, you know, to have good reputation and honesty and and good behavior with, with, with the community, with everybody. I love it. And Belle, if you, and I'm putting you on the spot, but what was it that stood out to you about the feeling here at AGF? Well, I think that for me, whenever we came in and we got to see all of the staff just all in one location together, working together, there was so much synergy. Mm -hmm. It almost felt like it was, they were your family. All your employees were almost like your, your daughters is how it felt. Mm -hmm. Just a very intimate group. You could, we could feel the love. I know I could feel the love and the camaraderie. 
and how everyone helped each other. Oftentimes, I think in businesses, people can work in silos, and, and I didn't feel any of that. Everyone was encouraging of each department, and they all helped one another, and that really stood out for me is just how personal, personable and loving you all are one with one another. And the quality, oh, you. the quality you that you so care much. about with your thank fabric. You. Thank you so much. Because we see, um, we see this is the success of everybody. We never see that this is the success, that they work for us and this is our success. I never instilled it, it, this in, my, in all the group that were for me. For me, we are nobody. We can have the vision. We can have a long-term vision as a business, but we, we are nothing if we don't have them. So for me, it's, it's very important that nobody, uh, you know, takes a, okay, this is my thing, I did it. No, we all did it. So that's why we are all at the same level. I am not more than anybody here or Walter. Uh, so we try to, to pass that message to our employees. So it's our, our group also, it's our successes. We did this and we did that. And, and this is so important. That's why they get along so well. It was very apparent, mm -hmm. very apparent. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And if I may add to, you've mentioned when you bring on a fabric designer, you look for someone who fits your family, you know, yes. that you get along with them. Is there anything you want to say about that? Oh, okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, for us are very important uh, values and the designers that we bring to to license. Um, they share the same values. Is <clears throat> it's a sense of not service, but it's a sense of what can I do for the quilting community, how my fabrics are going to impact on them, how they are going to make their life much prettier, nicer, easy to live and with the products, okay, I can have this floral that I can use for my son or for my daughter. or So ev every single designer has to share the same values. Um, for me, I, I think this is important. I love it. Yes. Did you want to add anything, Walter? No, no, that's everything she says is uh, correct. This is what we look for when we get a new designer. Besides the, the abilities of the designer, we also look for the other things. Mm -hmm. And I also share. like that you protect your designers. You don't want to bring someone else that looks like one of your other designers because then they'd be competing. Okay, and so other. you like having a distinct... Yes, exactly. We think, we think again, uh, we don't think that we have employees on designers. We think we have a partnership with designers. So we elevate the designer to, to the category of a star, and we don't want to overlap stars. Um, and again, what's the point of having an amazing amount of designers that they, sometimes they cannot uh, put the collection because we cannot print, or we try to um, elevate every des designer to the category of a star and not overlapping the stars. So each one, whatever your style is, you're gonna shine. Yep, I love that. Well, thank you. Thank you. And uh, Jenny, I think you had a question. I did, hi, I'm Jenny from Clover and Violet, and my question was, you have some beautiful, a beautiful variety of substrates. How do you decide which print is gonna be on the rayon or on the canvas, for example, when they're not even necessarily There'll be a print from the collection, but a different colorway, maybe. How do you choose that? I would love to know. Well, being me, a designer, myself, besides all the other designers that we have in the company, is for me, what the most important thing is, as a designer, we love to design things. But then you have to start thinking about how you're you you're gonna use that print. So my first question when, when I design a print and I question myself or the designers is I ask them, how do you think your people are going to use that print? So for us, the, the the type of print that is going to go on one substrate may not go on the other one because it's not going to be useful. So we try to be useful, that the people can use it. Um, and this is basically the concept on, on how to separate, for example, a, ray, a print for a rayon that may not go on a flannel. Uh, we also take into account um, the the season, of course, the season is very important, and then we to, we take into account um, the different countries all over the world and when this fabric is going to ship. So it's going to fit the lifestyle of that person at that moment. So 
there's a lot that goes into that. Yeah. Like a it. lot of thought. <laughs> it's a lot of thought. We just, uh, I was um, sitting with uh, one of my, my girls, Angie, and we were designing for our upcoming uh, Christmas collection, which are the best, uh, you know, prints that can fit the um, flannel category. And, and again, you have to start thinking, okay, would you use that? Will you wear this? Um, what? How do you think moms can use this for their kids? So it is a lot of thoughts on that process, yes. So can you tell us which print of that will be on flannel? <laughs> um, <laughs> usually in, in flannel for winter time and especially for kids, novelty is something that people are looking for. They're going to be using this a lot. Also plaids. Mm -hmm. Plaids are very straightforward and you can use it in a multitude of projects and on, not only for kids, for adults, uh, adults as well. Mm. Cool. So yeah. flannel pajamas for Christmas. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. backing, 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 backing for yeah. the backing, wheels. Yeah. A lot of people in the north uh, part of the country mm -hmm. they use flannels for backings. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, yep. love it. And Sharice, you had a question. I did. Uh, hi, I am Sharice of So Hooked on Treasures, and Pat, you and I have a color interest in, <laughs> <laughs> in common. I just want to hear about your love of your favorite color yeah my love of pink comes from a very 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 young age I think what pink um, the, the magic effect of pink is is um, exhilaration like happiness but it's love at the same time I and you know I'm pure about love for the others and never been harsh to anyone so for me I think the color represents me so well um, I think everyone should wear just a little bit, maybe an accessory or something, because p p pink uh, brings happiness in people. And again, it's the same. When you look after 10 seconds to the color pink, you start feeling your heartbeats go down and you start feeling more relaxed. So. I love it. I couldn't agree with you more. You feel the same way? <laughs> <laughs> Is anyone else singing that Aerosmith song, Pink? It's my Yeah, favorite. but that's not what it's about. Uh, no. No, yeah, like, <laughs> we're going to like Just parent edit like, that yes. one. Yes. <laughs> Don't yes. listen with your kids around. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sorry. So you do know that song. Though. I do. I was warning you so for the editing process. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Scratch that, folks. Don't listen to that one. <laughs> And Erin, you've got a question. Yes, yeah, so I'm Erin of Love So Modern. And my question is, uh, since being here, really learned the history and the story from the early beginnings of Art Gallery mm -hmm. and how small you were. And where I'm coming from now, I know the last couple of years, it, it, there's that struggle of feeling like you're never going to make it. It's so hard to compete with everything. And you have, you've grown such a beautiful um, company, what would be your advice to someone who is starting out and feeling like that is a mountain that can, they can never climb? Okay. Well, start. one of the things we think is that be true to your thinking, to your values, or whatever you do, be true to that, and you have to put a lot of effort on it. And be persistent We work so many hours, hours and hours and hours, all the time, even today. So we, we always, you know, put, you have to put a lot of effort and keep going, keep going, keep going, you know, no, don't stop. Because, you know, you want to make it, but it's, it's, it's the people who are in the middle, they stop and they say, oh, no, I cannot do it. Then, of course, you cannot do it. If you convince yourself, you cannot do yeah, it. Yeah, because you But if you keep going and doing the right thing and, and be consistent and, you know, constantly, you will make it. Yeah, because your brain talks to you, you know, <laughs> the wrong sentences yeah. all the time. Yeah. <laughs> all the time. You are not worth it. You cannot do it. I mean, just leave it up. I mean give in it's not gonna work and I remember and I have those uh, thoughts so. in my brain of course we started from nothing we started from nothing as uh, Latin Americans we came here as an immigrant more than 30 years ago um, we have that sense of resilience because of what so many things that happen in our countries politically economically so we are prepared for everything so we mm, and, and we support a lot each other, um, you know, people from all, all parts, all, all countries of uh, South America. We are used to this. So when we, when we came here, we are so tiny, 
tiny, tiny, that we knew it was so steep the, 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 the stair to climb, but we said to ourselves that we can offer a different view. So here is my thoughts. Niche yourself. So yeah, find your niche. Find your niche. Yes. Find yes. <laughs> find your niche. Words. That's, That's very important. It's a t-shirt. I remember if I can, you know, um, expand a little bit of this. I remember when I started. I I was first a quilter, so I was buying, going, buying uh, fabrics for quilts. And then I started to see, when I got the opportunity to start designing, I started to see like a hole in the industry, or uh, like a gap, something that wasn't filled, that for me was a, con I called this as a category, the contemporary elegant uh, niche. Uh, that wasn't feel very much. There was a lot of a lot of emerging uh, designers at that time. So I said, if I need to compete with really huge companies, huge companies, I have to offer something different. Um, so again, the base was to find that niche. And little by little, and I'm explaining and uh, with this um, a trilogy of uh, policies that we have, that we ser we swear, you know, we have it. Our, our entire life is amazing customer service. Amazing customer service, the best in the industry, and people can testify about that. Um, amazing quality and a different design. So this is how we started working little by little, but as Walter well, said, it took a long time. It, it took and a Pat long time. cry a lot too. Yeah. <laughs> Those years, she, yeah. She, and the show, she, look, nobody was stopping our booth and nobody was looking at us. Nobody so knew I us. I said, don't worry, take time. I, I, because I knew it was going to take time. So she said, don't worry, we will make it. Um, yeah, because when you design fabrics, it's, you are so proud of what you do is, hey, look at my fabrics. I did this and I did that. When the people don't look at you and pass by. It's, it's a feeling, it's a very, yeah, it's a very hard feeling. So I, 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 little by little, I start to overcome that emotion. It says, okay, people will understand that this is something that they can put a few bolts in their shops. Um, and, and again, our mm, marketing strategy, which is uh, different than most of the other companies, help us, help us, because we, we think customer is the king. There is no other than customer. So we want to please the customer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, let's Jen, Jen, and then Mary. Okay. I'm Jen of Gather Cotton, and I have to say one of the most fun things about being here is seeing the two of you together. Can you tell us what it's like to work with your spouse? <laughs> Very easy. Yeah. Yeah, very easy. That's the right no, it answer. is actually. Good answer. Because uh, she's a great person. I mean, she, it's easy to get along with her. And also, we are in two different um, um, areas of the company. So she's taking all the design and marketing, and I do all the other things the production, the finances, and everything else. So, um, you know, we're together, but, you know, in, in each, each one in, in different is a section and uh, of course we talk about you know whatever we have to do when we have to talk well but it's not like we are conflicting every day and it's doing the same thing so it's very easy for me <laughs> <laughs> well for me too for me too he's the love of my life oh, i'm married we're married oh, we're going to be married uh, almost 40 years now i mean yeah together 40 years and married a little bit less but okay so i was being the classical housewife mm -hmm. uh you know in the 80s when, when we get married and doing craft. I'm very crafty, I'm very artistic. I always has been all my life. I saw since I am nine, I took different courses in my country. So when it came the possibility, I was shocked because I, he proposed me uh, to start working together because he saw the demand of my hand painted fabrics and I couldn't ful fulfill the, the it, it was each time I have to paint more and more and more and more. So. He proposed me to to start going commercially with my um, my designs, and I said, "Oh my God, we are going to start fighting every single day." <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I keep it, I keep it to myself, right. you know. I didn't tell him anything, and it's the most amazing experience because the thing I think the key is he takes care of 
his thing and I never interfere with his decision. And I take care of my side of the business and he never interfere. Mm -hmm. So I think, I guess this is the, the, the trick. We respect each other and whatever, for example, if I want to put a, a fabric in that color and I think he never says anything, he says, you go ahead. And for example, if he's going to start um, a decision about commercialization in, in a new country or something, I never say anything to him because I trust him. Mm -hmm. So we trust each other and what we do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Teamwork yeah, makes so, the dream yeah. work. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Trust, respect, and admiration, and just lifting each other up. That's, that's it. Exactly. Yeah. I admire him. I think he admires me. Yes. And, and, and this is, I think this is uh, how we work because it, my fear was, oh my God, we're going to start fighting because I'm going to tell him, no, don't, don't, don't do this. And he's going to, he's going to tell me, uh, don't do that. But no, it never happened. Yes, we have general decisions to take about the company that we take it between together. together. Mm -hmm. And yes, we have day to day. We have back and forth, yeah. of course, of course. But at the end of the day, we all always, 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 it's not looking to us. It's looking how we can make the customer happier, releasing this or start selling in that country or, you know, whoever the decision is. I want everybody, I want to create a lifestyle for the people so people can can use our fabrics for everything awesome thank yeah. you and mary okay. you've got a question yeah i'm mary from mary garon quilts and first off i want to say thank you so much for hosting us this weekend and treating Aww. us like family Very and royalty yes. 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 Aww. Aww. For sure. and, um, our pleasure i really admire how you came from the humble beginnings to the big corporation that you're at now being um a minority owned business and yes. I just want to ask what advice would you give to someone who wants to become a fabric designer maybe even um, you know work towards minorities to try to get minority uh, individuals to start thinking about yes I can do that too I can be a fabric designer so what advice would you give somebody who's thinking about it but it is not sure if they can do it Okay, as a minority, you always feel out of place. And, you know, all, all minorities, especially moving or immigrating to a new country, mm -hmm. um, racial mi minorities also feel diminished. They feel, they feel they're not. But we never thought about a minority as a people that is not worthy as a, a, the same as other people. And we, we license designers, we hire people based on their talent. We never look at the color skin or where they were born, what country they were born. So for us, it's important. But I have to say, uh, if everybody is listening, that please don't be shy. Don't be shy and submit your work and don't be fearful. You have, I, I am sure you have a lot to offer. So, um, I mean, uh, Walter, I don't know if you want to add something. No, that's, that's correct. I mean, we, we, like she said, we look for the talent of the designer. I mean, Always. what they design and what they do. That's, that's what we're looking for. We don't care about where they're from or we what, who they are. We hope we can get more submissions from, uh, you know, um, different country minorities or, um, you know, race minorities of, of I, I would love, I would love that. Mm -hmm. I would love, we will feel yes. even more a family. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> even more, right? That's a great question. Yeah. And I'm curious, you said to find a niche. Are there any, and now that I'm asking this, if you do answer, there are going to be people like, oh, I'll do that, I'll do that. But <laughs> is there an area of fabric design where you're like, there's a hole right here and we need more of this? Yeah, the upcoming, the new generation is going to demand a new style of fabrics. Uh, and I think there, there, there should be many designers applying to find that niche that is going to come soon. Uh, I believe in less than five years, something like this is a new, as a new group that they're uh, looking for comfort, comfort. They are not so, they don't like those much fabrics are adorned or uh, busy. They, lo they like more simple, straightforward designs. And clean. <clears throat> yeah, clean, but because they want it, they, 
this new generations are looking for the experience now. This is what is in their mind. They live be f just for the experience of, of, of something that they they wanna they wanna start. So for me, the fabrics should reflect that lifestyle, um, and I think they're gonna succeed. They're gonna succeed because this is what is coming. What about boy fabrics? Like, is that I see a big hole right there. What are your thoughts on that? Is there a market a demand for it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We agree. We agree. And on the general um, conversations that we have about decisions about the company, it says, I think this, this, what it tells me, this market is very underseen. It's not, yeah, the a, a, you know. The problem is that when we make boys design, they don't buy as much as they buy for girls. Yeah. You know, they mostly it's, it's oriented to the girl, the fabric and, you know, the dresses and the boys is much limited, let's say, what they can make. You know, they don't like it. I don't know. It's a different taste of the boys. Mm -hmm. So we make some, but it's not that it's, yes. the reaction is not that strong like for girls. For girls, it's much easier to to sell. You know, the fabrics because I'll, it also is more girls in the world than boys. Oh, are there? I didn't <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, you guys. It's like a seven that. to one. <laughs> it used to be like a seven to one. I don't okay. know now, but uh, also I want to add. Um, I want to add that, uh, for example, the, we don't have to confuse the quilting mar the quilting industry, or the quilting market, or the quilting people community with the sewing community. That's a situation now that oh, when when you have only one Instagram account, um, if you want to expand, at the moment that it gets that you become big and you want to expand, either or you create a new Instagram account as a to, to, to split uh, the content that you have or um, you stay what, what you do because when you, the, the situation is usually for boys are garments mm -hmm. and garments we, the content that most of the, the, the companies put is about the, just the fabrics but they don't they don't exploit the um, the amazing amount of pictures that for boys um, boys wear or girls wear uh, children's wear. I think we don't exploit that much because we don't put, we don't have a second account to put that content in. So I think a good advice maybe if you want um, to expose those beautiful fabrics that maybe we, you should put a, an account or uh, you know a different account. Um, and yes, it's true what Walter said, but for example, we each year at least we try to release one uh, boys collection. For example, this year we're going to be released uh, from Jessica Swift, Timberline. This is a very boyish, uh, but girls can, can, can use it too because, you know, now there is a fluidity that um, with, uh, with uh, gender. Uh, and I think it's suitable for both, you know, girls and boys. But I think we should be displaying more and show it more and I think this market is going to respond much much better mm -hmm. yeah yeah awesome well thank you so much for being here for letting us come to your beautiful yes. office and warehouse thank you so yes, generous you. of you we have loved it yeah the, the, the spirit of AGF we feel it we so feel the difference yeah we feel the difference <laughs> and we don't want to Yeah, you can feel the difference. Yeah, well, this and, is so, in everything, you can feel the difference. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we try to do this is who we are. As I tell you at the beginning, we are exactly in our house the same way we are here. And we have a passion uh, for people that um, sew. And um, I am passionate and I want to transmit and I want to inspire. We need to inspire. There are so many people that need our inspiration. Um, they feel so lonely and they uh, find in this craft or art um, a way of to get a company. Um, so I think it's super important that um, we stay not only in name, but in a spirit. They can feel us. And in, in, in you starting this uh, career of entrepreneurs, always make people, make people feel that you are there with them. Being, being conversational on your social media posts and trying to answer emails and, and do this. So they feel that. Believe me, it's not a posture, it's not, it's, it's the reality. And the people feel it. 
when you are genuine and authentic and this is how you are and you you are in all areas of your life is so thank you so much for coming for yes, us it was you. amazing thank thank amazing you. to to receive you here to have you here for a couple of days um uh, yeah I, I am amazed so you have such an alumni um elizabeth it's a, not very nice students, very nice people, very yes. good-hearted people. Well, thank you for your generosity and making time for all of us. Very welcome. Okay. So thank you, Pat and Walter. It was so amazing to go to Art Gallery Fabrics. I just, I cannot describe to you the feeling of love and family that's there at Art Gallery. I mean, as you know, I love their fabrics, like the quality the designs, but even more so the people that are there. You just, you can't know until you know, you know, that they are just the most sincere, thoughtful, giving people. And I hope that you could feel that with this interview. And thank you to all of the alumni who came and joined. We just had such a great time together. Thank you for joining this week on the Craft to Career podcast. And next week, I have two more students who are currently in the quilt pattern writing course. One student who is brand new to starting a quilting business, although she's been in the industry for a while. And another student who also, she's been a ghostwriter for a major company in the quilting industry. And it's really an honor to have her in the quilt pattern writing course. And I'm excited for you to get to meet them, to hear more about their stories and what they plan and hope to do with their quilterpreneur career. And then we'll circle back with them in a few months and see how things are going and how the course has helped them progress in their business. So until next Friday, have a wonderful week. Please leave a review. Share with me what you are enjoying about the podcast. Let me know what's resonating with you. And until next Friday, have a wonderful week. We'll see you. Bye. Bye.